I'm not sure if Stacey Ann's mic is closing it. This her mic is open. Okay, we stopped. We stopped. We're not turning it now, so you can go ahead. Okay, fine. Okay, so welcome. Today is a new day. We are almost at midday. All right, but we still have the entire afternoon ahead of us. Today is a day for, for you to begin a joyous, fulfilling life. Today is a day for you to learn the secrets of life. You can change your life for the better. You already have the tools within you to do so through your thoughts and beliefs. And this excerpt um, is taken from Louise Hay, who um, was an American motivational author and the founder of the Hay Foundation. She authored many New Thought Southall books, including the 1984 book, You Can Heal Your Life. The second quote, as we begin our, our, our short talk, comes from Tranquil Waters. And it is really a thought to ponder on. It's an affirmation. I welcome change as it is an opportunity to grow and learn. And this, uh, this affirmation is actually a really, really very good mindset for us to have, especially during these times as we embrace this um, new reset in society with the pandemic. So it is a very big change for us. And we have to, in fact, look at it as an opportunity to grow and learn. So my topic is, in fact, titled Positive Affirmations. Affirmations are positive statements that can help us to challenge and overcome self-sabotaging and negative thoughts. When you repeat them often enough and believe in them, you can start to make positive changes. And they can also help us mitigate the negative effects of stress. So this day-to-day -day internal dialogue we have, which is referred to as self-talk, is in fact a stream of affirmations. So an affirmation is anything you pretty much say or think. And they are the starting point on the path of changing ourselves. But exactly how do they work? Affirmations are used in any situation where you would like to see a positive change or outcome take place in your life. We are constantly using affirmations every moment in our life, whether we recognize it or not. We continue to affirm and create our life experiences with every word and thought that we have. So they are in fact similar to the seeds we plant in the soil. So if we have poor soil, the seedling has poor growth or they do not grow well. If, however, the soil is rich, the seedling germinates and grows into a rich and fruitful plant. So the more we choose to think positive thoughts, that make us feel good, the quicker our affirmations work. So affirmations are tied very closely to our thoughts. So did you know that a vast majority of your emotions and behaviors have their roots in the subconscious portion of your mind? What exactly is the subconscious? 
we are all aware of the conscious mind, though we, we may not be able to control it fully well, yet the ideas, desires, aspirations, aversions are perceived by us. However, there's another aspect which we are not even perceiving. And this is to the subconscious mind. It is like a huge hard drive containing images, memories, experiences from our childhood to now. So what we're going to tie together is in fact our thoughts and forming positive affirmations. So why are positive affirmations important to us? Well, they are important if we want to bring about a change in our lives. And to bring about this change, we must retrain our minds to think and speak positively. Um, I'm going to pause here for a short clip on self-talk. And this video pretty much narrates a real life example of using self-talk to reprogram the subconscious mind. The author uh, and presenter of this video, I apologize, I'm just giving a little synopsis here of him, is a mind management expert. And his name is Swami Mukundanan. It's a very short clip where he gives us a real life example of what self-talk can do for us. So let's go. Okay. May I ask Monica? Sorry, we have no difficulty hearing it. Stacey, could you um, share the video for Monica? The... It should be a problem. She just have to send Thinking me the link. Yes, just send me a link in the chat, Monica. And um, Stacey will uh, share I'll it. I'll share it. Somehow the volume is not coming across from your computer. It looks like it. Um, I'm just wondering if it is you muted me. Uh, oh. because it's, um, I, muted, I muted you to see if um, you'd be muted if we would have um, heard the video better, but we didn't. So. Okay, so I'm just going to. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's see. I have to give you. Okay, just bear with me because it's a, it's a long clip. And I actually, it's a very specific part of the slide that I pulled. So I just don't want us to get um, uh, uh, to get the oh, wrong. It's, oh, it's, part, it's part of, it's, it's, it's embedded into your slides. Yes, but that's not okay. a problem. It should not be a problem at all. I just need to figure out, uh, let's see if I can just get it here. Okay. Uh, well, I, I don't think that's going to work. So, <laughs> we have to come back to the video. I'm just, uh, I'm just so sorry because I, it's from a long excerpt and I just, um, I just extracted the example. Oh, okay. A highlight. But it's so we get this from your mic, I guess, because whenever you speak, that's when we get the noise. When you not speaking, we're not getting the noise. So guess it's your microphone, yes. Yes, it is it may well be an audio issue. I'll have to look into that. So I, I, I apologize. That's okay. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so this is my video. All right. Um it pretty much, in a, in a, in a nutshell, um, speaks to um, Roger Bannister, who actually broke the four-mile record in the early um, 1960s. And in fact, everyone said he could not break the four-mile barrier. That is, 
running four miles in a given time. And um, he actually, he said, I'm going to break this four mile um, barrier. And he did against, uh, um, I mean, literally the world who said he could not do it. And when he did it, and he was successful, in that same year, 27 other persons broke the record, the world record, following in his footpath. And what, what it highlighted is in fact that it is a mindset. If you have this desire to succeed, all right, and you continue to say to yourself, I can do this, despite the odds and the world can be against you, you will succeed if you really focus. Um, so I'll just move on there with the next slide. So some examples of affirmations, and uh, we cannot slide them, um, though it may look simple, but they are very, very deep. I am successful. I am happy. I am generous. I am honest in my life and my work. I like completing tasks and projects on time. I'm grateful for the job I have. I enjoy working with my colleagues. I'm bringing a positive attitude to work every day, be it online or in my physical workplace. I'm excellent at what I do. I can do this. All of these are examples of positive affirmations. And this is how um, we can, in fact, implement them in our daily lives. So for example, if you would like to raise your confidence before any major undertaking, it's important to do that introspection and self-talk that you can do and accomplish this particular goal. Uh, if you would like to overcome a bad habit or improve your self-esteem and self-worth, if you'd like to finish projects you've started. So, you know, many of us have this um, habit. We may start something and uh, we are very um, unfocused. And before it's halfway through, we would hang it up and abandon it. But no, um, this, you can in fact apply uh, positive affirmations to. Also, improving your product productivity or controlling negative feelings such as frustration, anger, or impatience. And this is um, this particular point is really very pertinent today because we, we are facing a whole uh, new paradigm shift and we do have to adjust to make a lot of adjustments. And in that shift, you know, we tend to become frustrated and angry, sometimes impatient. And, um, you know, there's another step that follows. We may become, uh, this may extend into our personal and professional lives. So this is where you can, in fact, implement positive affirmations. So exactly how do we go about writing these, this affirmation? or statement. Well, I have five brief points here that I got from, it's a five-step process adopted from Mind Tools. All right, and the first says, think about the areas of your life that you would like to change. So everything comes back to your thoughts, your introspection, it's all personal. The second point, be sure that your affirmation is credible and achievable. So we need to keep it realistic. Base it on a realistic assessment of facts, for instance. And 
uh, I know many of you may laugh when I use this example. Imagine that you're unhappy with the level of pay that you currently receive. You could use affirmations to raise your confidence to ask for a raise. All right, so I'm gonna repeat that. Imagine that you're unhappy with the level of pay that you currently receive. You can use affirmations to raise your confidence to ask your boss for a pay raise. Of course, and, and that is opening up a dialogue. And we do a lot right now. Um, the odds are against us regarding this, but it doesn't mean you give up. We need to be like Roger Bannister. We need to break the barrier. So if you think you need a period, you have to you know, um, think of ways in which you can go about the process. But it starts from bolstering your confidence to open up a dialogue with your boss. All right. The third one, turn negatives into positives. So if you're struggling with negative self-talk, note down the things and thoughts that are bothering you. Then choose an affirmation that is the opposite of that thought and work on it. So a very key point, two negatives into positives. The fourth point, write your affirmation in the present tense. Write and speak your affirmation as if it is already happening. This helps you to believe that the statement is true right now and creates a sense of conviction. Five, stay with feeling. Affirmations can be more effective when they carry emotional weight. Every affirmation that you choose to repeat should be a phrase that is meaningful to you. All right. Now I'm a little bit worried because I do have a video here. Um, the video is titled 101 Positive Thoughts. And Stacey, and I can share this with you. Um, I'll just tell you where, when, where it starts. Okay, and this excerpt was taken from the audio book, 101 Positive Thoughts, by the lead motivational author of self-help books, Louise Hay. All right, and um, what I'm going to do, um, it starts at, let's see, 9.15, and I believe it stops, uh, let's see where it stops. I don't know where it stops. Just, let's just run it for um, an off, one minute, all right? But now we can it has, um, it has what we would like to see. So let's see. Go back. Just give me one moment, please. I just need to make my adjustment. Eight two seven. Okay, and this is available on YouTube. Should you um desire to listen to it a little more closely. So I'm posting it now, uh, Stacey, in the um, in the chat. Hmm. Chat. Right, and we can probably get an, uh, a one minute of it. Again, um, positive thoughts. You can start it at eight minutes and uh, stop at 9.15. Yeah. I need to stop sharing. 
it's audio, so I mean. And while Stacey is in front loading the video, I must say um, on a really very stressful day, I would turn on Louis B, like the audio book. So I'm just sharing a personal, um, my personal experience. And especially now, I would play it because it's a very long piece. As you can see, it's like an hour or so. And you can just, uh, if you have a 15 minutes or a half an hour, you can listen to it. And it's really very boosting. <clears throat> it boosts your um, your thoughts, you know, and it grounds you into positive thinking. And it keeps you focused on what it is you need to do and uh, to keep you focused on your goal, whatever it is you seek to achieve. So Stacey, what do I do? What would you like me to stop the share? Or okay, we're not hearing Stacey though. No? Okay. Thoughts that stand in my way. My new thoughts are positive and fulfilling. It's only a thought, and a thought can be changed. The most frightening scenarios we can conceive of are only thoughts. We can easily refuse to scare ourselves in this way. You want your thoughts to be your best friends, thoughts that shape your world in a positive way, comforting thoughts, loving thoughts, friendly thoughts, laughing thoughts, thoughts of wisdom and upliftment. I am not limited by any past thinking. I choose my thoughts with care. I constantly have new insights and new ways of looking at my world. I am willing to change and to grow. Every thought I think is creating my future. I'm constantly aware of my thoughts. I am like a shepherd with a flock of sheep. And if... Okay, thank you, Susie. Let's see if I can get back my um, my presentation. Um, uh, Stacy, I'm trying. Okay, I'm trying to get back my my video. Are you are you able to see my screen? Yes, I am seeing it. Yeah. Okay, but um, for some strange reason, it's not shifting. Okay, it's now shifting. Okay, so in a nutshell, and I hope I'm in the right place, affirmations motivate, inspire, and encourage us to take action and realize our goals. Because pandemic or no pandemic, we do have our personal, professional, educational goals. So, of course, there are lots of distractions out there right now, but it's really very important that we focus, focus on <clears throat> where we would like to go in our lives. And, of course, embrace this change, this new change that is surrounding us and i would like to share this very interesting um uh, excerpt from the president of integris james l hall center for mind body and spirit he's also the past president of integris mental health and he is currently the senior member of oklahoma state board of health and Dr. Krishna says, when you can focus on the best in yourself, your potential strength can come out and you can better 
cope and find solutions to life's problems in a healthy manner. So on that note, I'd like to say thank you um, for everyone for attending, but a special thank you to the HR team, wellness team, who invited me to give this presentation today. It was indeed um, a pleasure and an honor. Uh, I hope I've done justice to uh, the topic positive affirmations. There's a whole lot more that can be said on it um, in greater depth, but I did try to condense it in a very, very simple way. Um, and here you have my contact information, should anybody need to contact me for any reason, whoever is watching along. Um, in terms of my references, I just like to highlight a couple of them. And um, one would have been the leadership expert, that is Swami Mukundan, that I got my example from, uh, with breaking the four mile barrier. Okay, in addition, there is um, Louis He, the founder of the He Foundation. All right, and she has a lot um, of self help um, books, including audio books that are available online via YouTube. And of course, we still um, also um, integrist, the integrist website. And um, in fact, there's a lot of really very good reading <clears throat> on the impact of positive affirmations and meditation, especially during this time, to help us to maintain our mental health and well-being. Okay, and that's it. I'd like to conclude here and pass back on to Stacey Thank you very much, Ms. Koko. That was a very inspirational um, session and very informative. I would be sure to take away a lot from it. I would like to especially thank everyone who joined in with us today to support us and who have been supporting us thus far. And positive affirmation is all about training your mind to think positively. And it helps, it helps you to accomplish things. It can help you to complete projects. It, it's, it's just about setting a positive environment, especially with what we're going through right now. Um, I can open the floor if anybody wants to address Ms. Goku, have any questions, have anything to add. We all can we feel free to say anything. Yes, Ms. Goku, as you spoke, I, you know, what came to mind is that sometimes we need to shut out what we're hearing from other persons while we try to to use positive affirmations. And I'm thinking of the young lady from the US who came ninth in the race recently, Shakari. Mm -hmm. To me, she was trying to use positive affirmations at, before the race. Of course, it didn't work because she was being bashed back and front before the race. And afterwards, well, I don't even think we have let up yet. And then Jamaica invited her to, to, to vacation there and so on. And I, you know, I felt sorry for her because I felt what she was trying to do was to, to prepare herself for the race and for success. And I felt somehow that she yielded to what was happening around. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Ms. Goku. Mm. Actually, um, I think that's a very good I believe I did not follow the Olympics very, very closely. I'm so sorry. I have been focused elsewhere on doing a lot of uh, cost art work. But um, it, it is, I think a lot of success is tied to your immediate environment. Okay. And um, a big part of it is who you take counsel from. So, um, I agree with your point, June. Um, by no means I am an expert in my management, 
all right but i've just really tried to um uh, speak very briefly on the topic but um you are right i believe that it is important when it comes to affirmations it is a it's a personal thing and you do need to shut off what what is to external noise because success and growth that is self development is is a very personal thing so um i think you're looking there at this particular case it's a toss up of the in the external environment becoming too much and clearly the young lady probably did not have the strength to shut it off you know um so this business of self development you have, we have we are the ones who have to really work on ourselves so tushi or uh, jun i um, i agree with you a big part of it is shutting off that into environment because if you really want to aspire to a personal goal or achieve a personal goal it requires a lot of self self sacrifice self discipline self introspection okay and um, you know detaching your mind from external things you know if i quite um, added positively to <laughs> um your question there but those are my little thoughts on it yes thanks thanks much and and i really feel sorry for her to the point that i think she needs she needs mm -hmm. some specialist intervention at this point because she 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 was banned from participating in the olympics because she uh she used a, a prohibited substance and so she was making a comeback at these uh, events last week and um it really was hard on her and we have not let up yet every day on facebook it's something about shakari you know and i don't think we should do that to any person yes she came ninth and she would feel badly but we don't need to rub it in the way that we do mm -hmm. and this is what you um this is what we tune the negative for adverse effects of social media on teenagers and not only teenagers it, it also applies to everyone so yes um social media there are many advantages but um there's a responsibility that comes with it when you actually just shut it off thank you mr goko and i just want to add if it's okay hello go ahead yes yeah i just want to add that it's not only the externals but sometimes there is so much noise in our own heads that even in amid the the, the attempts to be positive about ourselves we allow things that happened in our past to destroy us so we are trying to think positive we're trying to shut everything out and all this noise in our heads not the externals our own thoughts are fighting the positive or negative thoughts are fighting the positive thoughts and that I, I, as i was reading earlier that today um it's described as a poison that can destroy us if we do not know how to um isolate and remove those negative things from our thoughts um but as you recognize in step four of creating your um your positive affirmation statements sorry that's number three point three you have to turn the negatives into positives so if you are in fact struggling with these negative these past negative events or whatever you have to now it, it's a shift you now have to um convert it into something that is opposite to what it is so you have to get an opposite thought to that negative so it's like a counteracting so if you have a negative thought you need to substitute it with a positive one is it a clear methodology 
is logic, logic to be banking on affirmations. Okay, and um, you know, sometimes you do um, not to stray away from the point you just made out of, but sometimes you need to, you know, when people are in negative, you need to sometimes move away from that. If you recognize that someone, you know, they are emitting things that you're not comfortable with, you need to move away from that um, circle. Okay, if you, you, you recognize it's really, um, you know, creating this harmony in your place for your well-being. You need to move away. 